My name is Hugo. I've uh, come from Portugal. I'm a, a graphic designer by trade. I've been working graphic design around 10 years. Um, I've been working in basements, uh, in tall buildings, in large corporations, in small corporations. But um, what's relevant about uh, what I'm coming here, why I'm coming here for today, is because I have loads of interests, and one of my biggest interests is games. Um, as you can read in the screen, uh, Homo Ludens of Games and Play and the Challenge of sol Solving Problems, an introduction. Because this is, we have 20 minutes and this is such a huge sub subject that I had to do this little shit here. Uh, so, <laughs> shit code, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't relaxing, it was actually a word. So, one, one, of, one of my boxes is, uh, is games. Why games? Uh, in order to understand games, we need to first understand ourselves. So uh, w what I propose to you is that we try to understand ourselves to uh, towards uh, Juan Huizinga, that in 1934 uh, started a new concept towards life. He said, okay, we have Homo sapiens, we have the 18th century Homo Faber, the one that build the tools that build big tools that was am amazing that, that was controlling everything uh, but we have another uh, area of interest that uh, divides us amongst other species of the planet and uh, that being games so uh, there are cute sentences <laughs> that if you're bored you can read and probably you'll find some of them funny my sense of humor can be very dark at times Okay, elements uh, required for human survival. This is crucial for me to, to show you because we, in order to understand games, we have to understand ourselves. And we can understand us ourselves towards the trinity. We have a physical part of life where we need to eat, we need to protect ourselves, we need to control the system. We have a mental part of life where and then th this one has been developed along the years. Thank you, Mr. Freud. Uh, where we, we are uh, accepting ourselves, we are dealing with others, we are finding new things in other people and taking them for ourselves and sharing. <coughs> and then, uh, this is a personal mind, I, I, I do believe that in order to have intelligence you have to have some kind of spiritual understanding. Even if it's new, it's yours, you need to, to, to focus on that. And games come at the last bit of this part because you need, you've, you've control the system, you have all the trinity together and then you need something, some activity to pull you forward, to make you think, to challenge you and to make you bigger, grow up in a way. So here we have game, another cute sentence. Um, we'll, we'll start by talking about the core, the core elements of game. Um, I'll, I'll ask you to, to travel with me a bit and to imagine you going into the matrix. Depth is just that. Neo, uh, everyone is aware of Neo, right? The, the guy from Matrix. Neo, at first, he was just like us, holding onto a computer. And then, the next moment, he was inside a new set of rules, a new set of boundaries. He was understanding those boundaries, and later on, he even uh, dominated them so well that he was able to do amazing things like this. Stop a hundred bullets or a thousand bullets in the air, right? Then you have clarity. Clarity is essential because once you have, uh, let me just go back to tell you, depth, once you have depth, clarity becomes the part that makes you keep on playing, to keep on trying to search the subject. If you don't understand, understand what you're talking about, then you'll quit, you'll turn it off, you won't gain nothing from it. Clarity allows you just that. For a, an example of clarity, I brought you Heavy Rain, which is a game where a child is lost and a mysterious killer is, uh, well, killing people, that was, that's what, what killers do, and leaving origamis behind. 
And in this game, everything happens for a reason. If you're, uh, you're following several characters around the game, but every, every element of the game is, is there to show you a way, a path. You are able to choose from several paths, and those choices will lead you to other, other resolutions. Then you have drama. Drama is like conflict. It's like a Greek play, high thing. Right? Imagine uh, the assassination of the emperor. Drama is just that in all this best. Drama will, will make you come back to the game often. Drama will give you urges of, uh, and rushes of blood that you won't have otherwise. I brought you a game that most of you won't, won't know or ha heard about, but for this image, every, every single character that you see in this image is a person. And for these persons, for these individuals, there's a huge, huge battle happening at this right moment. Two of them are laying in the ground and they, they are, um, well, they are suffering for their fellow mates. The, um, this is a game where three realms, three, three different uh, imagined countries fight for um, land and for control of, of things. So you, your choices, your individual choices will always lead to global choices. And well, if you choose wrong, um, uh, there's a chance that things can go very wrong for a lot of people because everyone is crucial here. Decision. Decision is, well, it's just that, what I was telling you about. You have to choose. And by choosing, you're growing it, like in life, right? You chose, well, you have to accept your path. Uh, over here, I would like to tell you about two, two particular <coughs> games and two stances. First, Fable, by Peter Molyneux. Some of you may, might know him. He's a, I'm a great fan of him. Uh, Fable is a really, really cool game because it would allow you to do stuff like this. You could, this is the same character. But evil doing would bring you to your uh, uh, right side, and the good doing would lead you to your left side. So, your choices in game: if you save the dog, if you helped um, an old lady, or if you choose to leave the old lady starving, would lead on to you later on in the game and follow you around. And even if you think, when you, at that exact moment that you think, oh, the game is almost over, it's, it's okay. No. The choice, the, the, the thing that you chose would follow you. Another nice system about decision is a game, a very old game called uh, Vampire the Masquerade, but the trading card game. They developed a system of prey predator. So the one to my right is my predator. No, it's my prey. And the one to my left is my predator. They would play around in a table and you'd have to balance your decision. So am I attacking my fellow prey or am I defending myself from my predator? And that investment, th those synergies, would uh, develop around the table until there's only two vampires and one ruling overall, like, like it should be. So we have, at this point, achieved a game. We have core, core, core elements <coughs> for the game to, to work. We have achieved. We are ready to push it further. We can try harder this time. Um, we can choose, or maybe most games will challenge you to have less resources and to grow in a way, right? Uh, this aspect is really relevant for me. Uh, narrative. We cannot have in our life um, things uh, working out for us if we don't understand them as a whole. And in games, things won't work if they don't have a narrative. Even if they have these kinds of narratives, experimental narratives. Experimental narratives are like these huge, Im well, I imagine them as this huge 3D uh, canvas where everything can happen. You can get lost there. It's like a coma, and, or you can spend hours working on it, and nothing has a purpose, but it's your choice. You can either try harder and try to find a, a purpose on it, and still won't find it, or you can just quit at any time. And then you have performative uh, narratives. These grow from mostly watching, so we watch people do, it's like a bit like we, when we are a uh, child and we learn through the other persons, walking, talking. So these, these narratives are really a, a mummification, I think that's the word, cumulative. Um, I don't know if anyone here is aware of a game called Dixit. Is there anyone? Okay, so I advise you to search Dixit. Dixit is a tabletop game. Uh, Dixit, uh, 
has uh, well a board, some dice, and some cards that have <laughs> pictures on them. And the goal of the game is to make uh, I'll say a word, imagine dream, and everyone in the table will try to to guess what my my card was. And while there are several other cards in the table from all the other pr players present, the objective of the guy saying the word, so I said dream is to make it uh, not so obvious that you'd guess my card at first time, but uh, at the same time make it so that someone chooses my card. It's really complex like this, but it's, it's easier if you try it. I advise you to try it. Let me just tell you that imagine and on this cumulative information or narrative, imagine that you're playing with a really good friend of yours and that friend of yours has a special uh, affection for dolphins. And in that picture might be just the slight bit of int of a dolphin, and you'll be looking at the card and say, mm, <laughs> you, you, you're the guy that chose this card. So this is really cool to understand how the process of accumulating uh, information, uh, gathering it and sharing it with, with other people. Uh, then we have the descriptive. Descriptive are very, very thorough uh, narratives. They, are, they allow you... Um, <coughs> low space or few spaces to, to complement because they are very well built but still these are usually the, the narratives that, uh, that bring the most from it to the, to the world. They'll, they're giant cultures of people that play games that have their own ling languages, lingos, that have their own gestures that come from descriptive narratives. Okay, this is the boring part. Uh, I don't know if I'm going too fast, you can tell me because I had five points and I'm already at the fourth. <laughs> um, semiotics. Um, semiotics is, well, uh, for me it's uh, Charles Sanders Pius and Ferdinand Saussure. Uh, the, those guys were really good in semiotics, so I won't be telling you what, what, it, what it is, but these, these are the main correlations of, of semiotics. Semantics, synthetics, and pragmatics. But in games, uh, or if we understand semiotics in games, it's really, really much more fun. Avatar and empathy. Games uh, usually have an avatar, your character. Your empathy towards the character determines how good the game will develop for you. How, what kind of experience, re rewarding experience you'll have on it. Here we have two really, really cool for me avatars. This is World of Warcraft. This is one of the largest games sold everywhere. So everyone, well, uh, if you ask around, maybe one of your friends has at least played it. It's like the other game that I've told you about, Arcade of Combat, where your character influences in the world. You'll gather on guilds. Um, characters like this were sold at eBay for $200 sometimes, because this, this, would, this really requires an investment of one's time to, to develop. And on the other side, we have this cute man playing Monopoly like a boss, right? He's, he's being the millionaire. And this is empathy, this is how, how it works. You being inside the game, letting yourself go and no restrictions. The game has to be good in order to, to work like that. Immersion and magic. <coughs> well, here we have um, a really, really cool thing. That is the magic circle. Huizinga defined this first. The magic circle, for me, has a picture, has a bit to do with uh, how the Indians shared their culture. How uh, tales were, tell, were told from father to, to son, and from grandfather to grand, grandson, and so on. Uh, the best example that I could come up with was uh, Dungeons & Dragons. That's one of the oldest games, and dice-based games are the games that are still in pro uh, program games. The base is the same. Rolling dice, calculating the average probabilities. But it, th this game was m so much more than that, or is so much more than that, because you need to go out of your body and think that you're either a dwarf or a uh, princess or something to, to understand it. And that's real immersion. On, on that picture there, you'll see, uh, this is from a, a film, I, uh, I'm afraid I won't recall which film it is, but you'll see the, the guys playing, and well, they, they do look a bit bored, but well, they are trying, and they are, I, I believe they are developing uh, a really nice, nice game over there. On this side is Dungeons & Dragons Online, so you have it, well, your avatar is already in a virtual world. It's not on your, or on your mind alone. And this was how they seen each other back then, I think this is 70-something. 
So they were really cool guys. The same guys that we had here were, were seen like this in magazines trying to sell the game. This is really amazing. I found out this and well, so imagine what could be cooler than a guy holding a sword and a, <laughs> a wolf skin and a helmet smoking a cigar on a bike. Well, ladies seem to like it. I, I tried this one. Well, time and time. Uh, I would like to tell you uh, about Braid. Braid is a, uh, an, uh, a game that tells you that time is not always as we perceive it. There's other games that do this, but this is really relevant also, because in our lives we don't have... Uh, our time is the most precious uh, value that we have. We, we are here for a limited time, so we have to do <laughs> the best things with it. And, well, games allow you to... to relief from that, that time and to enter other times. Time, uh, in Braid, you'll only achieve things by coming back in time. There are certain objects, certain goals that you'll only achieve once you fail first and then rewind the time and then do it again. And on the, the right side, we have Game of Life. It's a really old game. We don't have it in Portugal, but uh, it's a really famous game in the USA. And Game of Life allows you to live a life from since you're born till you die. And you'll raise up a family, you'll go to university, you'll, you'll do everything that you'll do in life. And, and now they've developed this cool thing with tablets and you can mix technology with the board, which is really cool also for this, this kind of elements that are a bit lost. <coughs> in narratives, uh, I guess everyone knows Tetris, right? That was an easy one. And this is Journey. This is an amazing game. I can tell you personally that this was one of the best games I ever played in my life. And if there's one, someone that's made Journey listening to this, or ever will listen to this, this, this is really an ace. Uh, Tetris is a, has a really less complicated or complex narrative. You just have to set up the lines and make the, the most out of it. It's your goal. You'll define your goal. Journey, on the other, on, on the other hand, has this really, really amazing thing where you start the journey alone, by the, by the start of your path, <coughs> another traveler will join you. You'll never know him, you'll never hear anything about this guy. You, you won't know the player, he's not your friend on any list, but he'll help you through the way, and it's a real person. He'll help you through the way, and, 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 uh, until the end of the game. And also, the only way you'll have to communicate with him is through uh, 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 notes, singing notes. So you'll just sing to him and he'll sing back to you and he'll call you to do something. This is really, really an amazing experience. If you have the chance to play this, please do it because it's really, really cool and graphics are amazing. Okay, geography. Here we have another uh, really famous game by now, this Kirin on, the, on one hand. That's, that's that one. Uh, people have, have talked about, about a lot about geography in games. Uh, games are getting huge. Games there's the, well, they, the te te technologies are now uh, allowing com uh, computers to do uh, crossing over terrain. So you can just sample and sample and sample endless terrain. Like uh, Minecraft has no end. So uh, each time you start exploring, there will be a more land. So you can just go and go and go and go. And Skyrim, uh, people are telling that it has like 37 square kilometers of gameplay. So uh, of uh, actual space that you can travel. I don't think that's, uh, it's a bit mixed, but uh, well, it's a big game. Uh, there are big, bigger games in geography, but it's, it's a, a nice start. Okay, order versus chaos versus rules. <coughs> this is the most amazing picture I've found for this title. This is Marcel Duchamp playing chess. Well, well you, if you are aware of his work, your chess is a game of order. Chess is a game of uh, it, can be, it can be disruptive. It's amazing how you can play a game with the same person all your life and still play a different game every day. So imagine Duchesse playing a, a game of chess, uh, 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 Duchamp playing a game of chess, sorry, and it will be a, a great image. Then you have um, <coughs> Portal. Portal defies our concept of, of, of space. Uh, it, uh, you're locked in a uh, science project uh, and you need to get out, survive, and you're, 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 you're harmed with this gun that can make holes through, through walls. And you have to solve this, all these puzzles, these really, really nice puzzles, and there are so, so much creative solutions that people have come up to, to finish the levels of this game that 
that shows us uh, shows us how much um, bright, how, how bright and how intelligent we can be. Um, I, I'm guessing most of the game designers that made this game didn't imagine that so so good solutions could come up and so easy ones sometimes. Then you have a really simple game on the end that's Pong that was one of the first games ever made. That's just a, a line and a dot and two, play two people playing like this, trying not to lose. There are more hardcore uh, version of this, this, this game that's called Pain Station. That's a uh, work of art. Uh, I don't recall the artist by now. But um, where you play Pong, but every time you lose, you'll get either slapped, burned, or something like that. That's, that's hardcore. And that's Sims. Sims is a game that was very, very, very famous, and I think it will be again. And, uh, well, it's complex in, in, in its way. Uh, it has order uh, by, by, by its, of, uh, its, uh, its origin, but then you can create chaos. Uh, I've seen loads of people um, uh, trying to, to mess with the game, and they would build uh, like pools and then leave their characters there to earn the money from the, the insurance and so on, and just to keep on playing. Okay, so we're reaching the complex part of the, the chat. Uh, this is Hal talking to us, and that's his, his move in the Space Odyssey 2001. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Frank Poole, I think, if I'm correct, is playing with him, and he, he makes this really, really easy move, and thinking that I'm winning the computer, and the computer wins him. Okay, real life examples for what I've bored you a bit with it for today. Here we're gonna, first I'm gonna show you, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Fun Theory. This is um, an amazing website made by, by Volkswagen, where they create kind of games uh, to make people do the right thing. This is really, really nice, and th this warms my heart up every time I see it. This is the world's largest, largest speed. So let's, let, let's just watch for a while. It's amazing how large it is, isn't it? Such a simple concept, such a, such a trivial idea that uh, for something that surrounds us every day and look how amazing the effects can be. Forty one ki kilograms more. There were people picking up the garbage from the ground around the bin just to try out how large the yeah, I'll, I'll, I'd like to show you another video from the Fanteria, or should I? Okay, yeah, I just have to touch here, I think, yeah. I'm tech savvy now, amazing. Here we have another, the Fanteria, another, another one. This is a really cool one also. They had to, to make so people... If you a lottery, okay. would do two things. One, it would photograph uh, speeders and give them a uh, citation uh, and that money goes in a pot but if you're obeying the law your picture will also get snapped and you'll be entered into a lottery and win some of that money from those speeders. So imagine this, traffic tickets, money doesn't go to the state, money can go to you if you play by the rules, right? This is really cool. I, I advise you to check this, this site out and it has really nice ideas and uh, so it's really, they, they managed to do it, it's, it's really cool, it's really cool. Uh, next one? Okay, right. This is the fat system, this is how uh, American cops train, or some American cops, since the, this is not universal. There was a screen in front of the user, this who has a simulated whip and played, identical uh, with SIG 40 to complex situations of an fire harms and, and stuff like that. The, back of the, room chooses from a list of the cool thing about this, this fat thing, besides the name, <laughs> is that uh, the guy uh, doing the, the test, he does, never knows uh, what is going to happen. So, uh, I imagine, one day you're seeing the same situation, the girl comes out of the, the car, the bandit comes on the, the back, back seat, 
And the other day, a completely sim uh, different simulation will happen because this guy is controlling and he has a lot of probab probabilities to add to it. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, now I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about uh, World Without Oil. You can. This was an amazing idea. You've probably seen this on TED. Uh, Jane McDonigal, I think. I hope that I said your name right. Uh, she, she came to TED to present this idea, and, she came, and the next idea, she, she was also there. Imagine a world without oil. That's the, pr the first premise. So they, they've created this game where people would have, have to find solutions uh, for a world that had no oil. And the feedback was amazing. Few, very, very limited frame of time and very, very, very good results. And this is what I believe it will need to happen more and more. I advise you to search that for this, this talk. Uh, it's really, really, really cool. This is a very, very complex, this is a very complex uh, problem for us, I think. Well, it, it, it touches us all. So, okay, you can skip that, that part if you want. Um, and this is uh, Super Beta. She had a problem, a uh, health problem, and she came up with this idea. Super Beta is a, a, a place that where if you're sick or if you're having a disease, you can go and this will mo mo motivate you. This will help you through your goals. Um, you can play it a bit. The adventure, and the first question we ask you is, are you up against an injury or illness, or are you trying to find... A so you define your goals, and by reaching your goals, you reach every, every other aspect of your life and, and grow up a bit. drop-down box that allows you to pick what goal you're looking for. I'll say more about why it does that in a minute. Um, the next screen you see... So this is how the, the, the complex works. I'll also advise you to check this one out. The, the cool thing here is it imagine uh, that you're really sick and you have um, you have no motivation or no one to motivate you. This will help you. You'll 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 get some help from here. This is this is a cool idea. Okay, next. Uh, desert bus. We don't need to to pass the video, but I'll tell you about desert bus. This is a really really nice idea. Uh, well, I believe this was in. Uh, 90 something there was um, Penn and Teller are some <coughs> magicians slash comedians in USA and they they've made this game or this prototype for, for Sega CD that was uh, that had several games one of these games inside the CD was really became really famous be because it was this game Desert Buzz. Uh, Desert Buzz is a game that will uh, invite it's, it's considered the first real simulator of uh, bus simulator so this is the first one and you'll have to do a, a trip of eight hours in game to reach your objective and win the game. So this was obviously some way to mess with your friends. But the cool thing about this Penn and Teller thing is that, uh, well, this CD, didn't, I don't think it, it ever come back out, so uh, probably it's a rarity if anyone has one. Uh, uh, besides the fact that the, the, the buzz has a little slight tendency to go to your left, as you can see, to make you crash, and if you crash, the tow would come and pick you up in real time. So if you've traveled four hours, the tow would tow you back four hours. So, okay, so what happens then, what's good here? People had this idea, why don't we help other people with this great, funny game? So they have these marathons, and uh, the, uh, in 2011, $4,000 were collected by playing this game. They would uh, assemble people for and for charity to help kids. Four hundred thousand, yeah, four hundred thousand dollars. So for for charity, they do the marathons, and the last they played the game was six days and six hours. So there are some brave players around there that want to help kids. All right. Okay. Last but not least, Peter Molino, twenty-two cans. This is an amazing concept. This blends everything that we've talked so far here. Peter Molino uh, has quit uh, Windows. He was working for Windows games, I, think, uh, I guess. And uh, I started his own studio that's called 22 Cans. <laughs> Why 22 Cans? Because there are 22 projects in it. And each pro project from the start, this is the first one, this is the image for the first one, will be amazing. This is just uh, a cube, 
but it is not a cube only. There will only be a person in the world that will solve the cube. Only one. You can buy the game and play it for one dollar, it says, or something like that. Or you can buy a tool that helps you go through the cube faster. This will be online and everyone will be able to assess to it. So this will be thousands of little cubes to, to, to break. Uh, but only one person will win the game in the world. So you can buy for one dollar or you can buy for $50,000 a tool to play with it. So this is a really new concept. They, they don't even know what they're doing with the information that they will gather from this. They are still striving to understand how this could work and <coughs> what feedback they'll have from, from the game itself and from the players. But I'm guessing for, for, from what I've read online and from the things that I've seen, this will be a huge success. And so will be the 22 other games that will release as these 22 camps. This will be curiosity, imagining what's inside the box. Imagining how the guy that will find out what's inside the box will share it to the world. Imagine how this would be to you, right? I'm the only one person that's seen what's inside Peter Molyneux's box. This is, this is great. This is a great idea. Uh, I'm a, a huge fan of uh, things that are dealt with time. I believe that uh, art, and this is a, has a lot to do with art. I believe that uh, art or uh, supreme art will ha always have to do with a frame of time because it will only be accessible for this instant and this instant alone. Us that are, that are in this room right now, we are experiencing a very, very unique frame of time. So if we can take something very precious from this, it will be really cool. Imagine being the guy that will win curiosity. OK, so these are our main problems. Economic collapse, energy strife, water sustenance, climate change, and extinction, while for unknown reasons, of, or all the above. What I propose to you, or what I think that, to, that we can go home thinking, is that how can we, uh, through games, I do believe it's through games, because games are not intrusive. You'll only play a game if you're wanting, if you're willing. So how can we, through games, uh, sort some of these problems? That's my challenge to you. Uh, in my work, I try to do that when I can. So when I get home from my regular work that pays me, I go and think about ideas that can do this. I, uh, I think that that eventually will lead to something good. Uh, so through games, we have the creation of meaning, uh, a, a new meaning, a more complete meaning, a more thorough meaning, and the, pres the preservation of content. This is very relevant. Some of our um, mainstream culture uh, information comes from not only books, not only records, but nowadays they come from games. Some of the kids that I know, younger kids, know things from games that they've never seen any other place around. And they, they've learned about mythology, they've learned about health, they've learned about safety. And that's, that's really nice. Games like this can be a, a model for an e exemplar reality. Uh, imagine this room and we need to create a safety escape route. If we program a computer to do it, the, pro the, the computer will tend to flaw eventually because it will search for the solution that we programmed him to. If we have 50 people online playing, or 100 people, or 1,000 people trying to look for the solution, they will be closer to the truth, because it's our brains, it's how we work. So probably 1,000 people working would be better than a million people, a million uh, computers doing it. Uh, tapping into co content. This, is ha this has to do with a bit with what, what Volkswagen has been doing with that fun theory. Uh, corporations, companies, the money side of, of things is, is here. So we can make games, but we can also understand what choices were made in the game. What preferences people have. Do people rather green or red? Do people want to eat this or that? Uh, how was that problem solved? And what glitches were found in that system? So this is really another thing that games aren't yet into, but I believe that really soon, and this is what Peter Molino is trying to do, is being smart about this. He's, he's going to grab it and make it really huge. And well, this is a bit of a lie. Well, I, I, I do believe that hopes, uh, and, uh, my hope is that every human uh, being in the planet will, through a game, any game, or any kind of play, better saying it, uh, make the world better. because. If we're having fun doing it, it's not work, it's play. And if it's play, it's a game. And if it's a game, it's, 
we're gonna remember it. We're gonna be closer to each other playing it together. We're, we're, we're bound, binding. And well, people that play together, I think that there's a, a study doing it, a uh, study released not so long ago that say that people that play together tend to live better and tend to accept each other better and tend to trust more in each other. And if you think that sometimes in order to play you have to, okay, the dice rolled uh, seven. <laughs> Uh, six face dice rolling seven. That's it, and that's all. Uh, thank you, f thank you for coming. I have, uh, I have one more thing to tell you. I have made thirty-one posters. I don't know if we have thirty-one present, but I hope so. Uh, those posters were made through processing. Uh, for the guys that were here last, last uh, in the last speak, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's um, a software that allows you to program a computer to do something. I've programmed it to do the background of the posters. The posters do seem alike, but they are all different. Behind your poster, you'll find a code, a QR code, inviting you to play a game with me. So, uh, you'll find a message, and the message will have another code, and you have to decode it. Decoding it, you'll find a word. You'll have to talk with at least 16 people, different people, to understand what the sentence, to make uh, sense from the sentence. So, the, sen the sentence has 16 words. So, I hope you enjoy playing Shaken. It's, it's called Shaken because of James Bond. Shaken, not stirred. It's kind of a, a, a spy game. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I wasn't too boring. And I hope my mistakes weren't too large so that you can accept me. Thank you all for coming. Here's a All right, uh, so we're going to have a few questions now. We can't have too many because uh, we're going to be late. But, well, I have a question. Do you think that in the future we won't have schools anymore, but just games? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I, think, I think we'll play more in school. Uh, I, I hope so. I played very, very little. In, when I was a kid I, I, uh, in Portugal, um, I didn't have a uh, playground. I had uh, school, then I would go out of school, but I was a bit different. I guess Nelio had a playground. He was Portuguese too. <laughs> uh, I had school, and then when I get out, got out of school, I'd go home and study more and do my homeworks for hours, and that was so boring. Uh, well, it, it gave me some discipline, that was cool. But I do believe that we'll play more while learning. Learning, to, uh, uh, pl uh, well, learning through play is very, very relevant. It doesn't bother us. It's very, very easy to ease into us. It will allow us to... Okay, I won't forget this. This is how my body moves. This is how my heart works. This is how my head thinks. And Learning, retaining information like this is easier, at least for someone like me. I, I, I do think this is a general idea. Okay. Right, so we still have time for a few questions. Any volunteers? If no, we're just going to finish it up. And we have a question here. Fantastic. Hi. Hi. Uh, great, great talk. Thank you. Um, do you think any objective, uh, no matter how boring or unpleasant, can be turned into the objective of a game and therefore motivate um, the person to go for the objective a lot I, more. I do think so. I, I do think so. I, I do believe that we can, um, but this has not only to do with games, this is how we approach problems, how we approach issues. Uh, we can do it through a game or we can do it through uh, an order or just through chaos. It's, just, it's, it's, uh, it's how we think, but it's easier through a game because imagine uh, I work. Um, eight hours usually, but sometimes I work 24 hours straight, or sometimes I have to do uh, 42 and sleep at the office or something like that. But <coughs> if I, if I s tell to myself, okay, this is part of my task today, tomorrow it will be different and I'll reach my objective and I'll go through it and I've grown a bit more, then, then you have some positive. Uh, it's, it's, it has something to do with what you're saying with rewards. And that's very relevant. I, I was supposed to talk a bit about, about that, but I was afraid I think I took too, too much time. Rewarding is very relevant in our society. We don't reward enough. Or well, at least, where, uh, from my understanding, I do believe if you're rewarded often and in small proportions, and then when you eat a big goal, a large reward, that's that will maintain you going. So if you're working eight hours and you stop and have a nice dinner, or you go home and see your wife, or you just do something you really like, and then you go back to work, motivated, then it's okay. So, I guess so. I guess it's possible. I do believe so. Thank you.
Thank you. Hello, thank you so much for your talk. Um, my question is more, there are a lot of people, also governments and stuff, trying to get the kids from gaming. What would be your message to them? Okay, that's, uh, I, I don't think that's possible. That's like turning off the internet. Or that's even worse than turning off the internet, right? Uh, we're talking about content. Games are content. Games that will, they, games that are safe keepers of s very relevant stuff. Like uh, uh, books, I'm a really great book lover. I collect old books. And I collect books that no one wants. Because I do believe that one day, one single day, that book on my shelf will help me find a solution. And I collect really weird books. So I, I, I don't think it's possible. I, I, I believe that um, w there's where, where, where we are motivated. Or uh, you cannot stop a kid from playing with any toy. So you cannot stop a kid that is in a room with a crayon to create its own game. So it's, it's endless. The possibilities are endless. I've created games uh, to with grass or, or with something that can it's around us. So I, I don't think that's possible. No. All right, Hugo, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Geneva. <laughs> Guys, don't forget to get your posters here. You can see there's a uh, code in the back. That's what you use to play the game. So please get them on the way out. Uh, there's still some food outside. So I hope I see you guys uh, on the next Creative Mornings. So thank you all for coming and see you next time.